Hey guys, Caitlin here. Uh, welcome to our monthly Facebook Live. Once again, without my beloved Clara, uh, because we're still working from home. Uh, today, or this month, we are talking all about inflammation on the blog. And so, this week, we had a great blog go up. Um, cortisol. Uh, our intern, Kristen, wrote a beautiful blog about how to reduce cortisol naturally. And so, we're going to talk about that today. So, what is cortisol? It is a stress hormone. And it's kind of a buzzword. A lot of people talk about cortisol in regards to weight management. That one gets thrown out a lot. Um, but basically, when you are stressed, chronically stressed, uh, cortisol will rise. And it can have a negative impact on our health to be constantly stressed. So constant stress increases that stress hormone, and then it can lead to inflammation, increased blood sugars, blood pressure, um, insulin resistance level, constantly, every day of the week, no rest days, that can increase your cortisol levels. So we want to incorporate different types of movement, not just high intensity. So it could be walking, gardening, um, yoga, stretching. Okay, I think we're back at a Wi-Fi issue. Um, so anyway, different types of movement, weight training, yoga, Pilates, low intensity exercise is really great to incorporate in there. So you're not just going high intensity all the time. Um, a lot of my patients who are struggling with certain health conditions where stress is a factor, like PCOS, um, I recommend cutting it down to around two times a week, especially if the menstrual cycle is irregular. Uh, so yeah, exercise is number one. Number two is hydration. So we definitely want to make sure that we are well hydrated, um, not just water, but fluids in general. Uh, fluids or water can get kind of old. So we have a great blog about what to drink if you are tired of drinking water. Hey, Anita. Um, one of my favorites that I just grabbed one is called Spindrift, and they have this new flavor that I'm really digging. It is pineapple. And so it is a sparkling water, but it has um, juice squeezed in. So it does have like a little bit of sugar in it, um, naturally from the fruit juice. And they also have a lemon tea one that's really good. It tastes kind of like a Arnold Palmer meets a sparkling water. So love Spindrift. I get it at Target. Um, and underneath in the comments, I'll link any blog that I mentioned today. Okay, so definitely getting in the hydration. Um, and reducing caffeine. Ooh, that's a big one. Uh, caffeine increases our cortisol levels. So some people feel jittery or anxiety when they uh, drink too much caffeine. So cutting back on that as well as cutting back on it in the afternoon or any time closer to when you're going to sleep because it's going to raise those cortisol levels in the afternoon with your afternoon cup of coffee. Uh, when naturally we want to see our cortisol levels drop around that time as our body is preparing for sleep. So if you're a caffeine drinker, I got my one cup of coffee with me today. Uh, think about reducing it and trying to not get that caffeine fix later on in the day because it can interrupt your circadian rhythm. In that same vein of watching your sleep, um, reducing your alcohol. Alcohol can interrupt sleep. And we don't give sleep as much credit as it's due. Sleep has a huge impact on our overall health and our stress levels. So reducing caffeine and alcohol can help improve sleep. Alcohol in general, we recommend around one to two drinks a day per person. Um, usually one for women, two for men. Um, but you want to watch it. The next one is kind of, what's the word that I'm looking for? Uh, I don't know. Uh, confrontational carbs. You know, it's that, uh, that buzzword that everyone's trying to cut out um, with all these keto diets, Atkins diets. Everyone's worried about carbohydrates, but our body needs carbs. Our brain runs on glucose and glucose from, comes from carbs. So when we deprive ourselves of carbohydrates, our body kind of goes into this stress mode 
raising our cortisol levels. So eating carbohydrates throughout the day with each meal and snack is actually gonna help your body feel better and it's gonna help reduce headaches, brain fog, fatigue. Your body's gonna feel better with some carbohydrates on board. So that's gonna be one of the main things in the breakfast recipe that I'll be making in a minute um, is carbs, because we need it. The next one is to eat enough calories in the same vein. If you are not eating enough calories, your body is under stress. So everyone's heard starvation mode. Uh, basically, when you reduce your calories too far below your metabolic needs, your body goes into this fight or flight mode where it's gonna store everything and hold on to everything that it's got because it is stressed. So reducing your calories, using a calorie counting app that may give you 1,200 calories a day, 1,300, 1,500 calories a day. It's probably too far below your calorie needs. So if you want to know what your calorie needs are, I definitely recommend talking to a dietitian versus going with that one approach fits all my fitness pal kind of calorie counting. Because it's probably not enough. In that same world with calorie counting and deprivation is yo-yo dieting. So the process of losing weight and regaining weight, losing weight, regaining weight, being on and off diets can have a huge negative impact on our health. So let's say you had your markers, your health markers tested at point A and then you lost weight, a bunch of weight. And then inevitably most diets fail and you may regain the weight. So at that point, after you've regained the weight and possibly even gained more weight than you originally were at, um, and you had those health markers tested again, more than likely they are now worse. More cortisol, more stress, maybe your blood sugars are worse, uh, maybe your blood pressure is higher. So just the act of losing weight and regaining weight can have a greater um, negative impact on your health than if you were to just stay at the weight that you were at and focus on health promoting behaviors. So that's really the goal of our next month's um, blogs will be about haze, health at every size, because we see how negatively we can be impacted by the weight loss and dieting industry because it's negatively impacting our health and 95% of diets fail, meaning that weight loss is almost always regained. So we see how um, our health could be improved by not focusing on weight and more so focusing on health promoting behaviors, like um, moving your body, exercise, uh, that's exercise. Uh, eating a balanced diet, focusing on your sleep, reducing your stress. So get off the yo-yo diet cycle, as we say. Next one is to reduce stress um, in any way you can, and that may include meal planning. So food stress can be huge, and if we, my dog might start barking. <laughs> if we plan ahead, not necessarily saying you have all those little meal prep containers ready to go, but if you have an idea of what you're gonna eat, uh, that sheet behind me is usually um, our meal plan, what we're gonna eat for the week, until I wrote some pretty words on it, and now I don't wanna cut, cut it off, but we plan out ahead. Not necessarily cooking it, but just having an idea. And that really reduces food stress. So that recipe, that breakfast recipe, is gonna be a meal prep recipe. You can make it ahead of time so you don't have to worry about it. And that breakfast is just a breeze in the morning. Different types of foods can help with our stress levels. Um, and anti-inflammatory foods can help reduce inflammation. So that is worth mentioning. Um, your anti-inflammatory foods are going to be fatty fish, salmon, tuna, trout, mackerel, sardines. Uh, we had a few new recipes go up on the blog last month or on the recipes page uh, using fish that is not salmon. We had a request for that. So I put up some um, air fried cod nuggets. I put up a great rainbow trout recipe a pasta recipe using anchovies, and a sardine recipe, sardines on toast. Um, 
So if you're looking for some more omega-3s, how to get them into your diet, check out those recipes. Eggs um, are also anti-inflammatory. Nuts, seeds. I get a, question, a lot of questions about which nuts and which seeds are best. I just recommend getting a variety. They all have benefits. So maybe one week you're doing um, sunflower seeds, maybe the next week you'll do pistachios or swapping out the different types of nuts and seeds. Dark leafy greens and vegetables are anti-inflammatory. Berries have those nice dark colors, so all of those phytonutrients, um, as well as other fruit. Olive oil, avocado oil are the main oils that I recommend cooking with. Um, avocado oil is my go-to for any high heat cooking. Olive oil is my go-to for cold foods um, or low temperature cooking. It just doesn't have as high of a smoke point. And then dark chocolate. Uh, which is a great one to hear. Um, I also recommend cocoa or cacao uh, nibs. They're these little crunchy bits of the cocoa bean that you can add on to into your cereal or onto a parfait or anything like that to give you that you know, chocolatey crunch. It's a little bit more bitter than chocolate because it doesn't have that sugar component, um, but I really like the flavor and the crunch that it adds to foods. And it's anti-inflammatory. All right, last two before we get into the recipe. Um, practicing mindfulness. So we have a great blog up about um, grounding techniques. So you may have heard the term mindfulness or mindful eating. We talk about a lot where you're present with your eating experiences, but mindfulness in general is really useful for reducing your stress. Um, I read a book where she, the author recommended just take 10 minutes and lay down on the floor and just breathe. That kind of grounding technique. Um, a grounding technique we use is usually um, picking the five sense of the five senses, picking one thing for each sense that can help bring you just down in that moment. So essential oils for smell or feeling the grass on your feet for touch um, or petting an animal. Um, what else? Sight. So maybe looking at a picture of family or um, coloring, anything like that that can bring you into that moment and just bring you back in that um, out of that stress can be really great. So I'll I will um, link to the blog about grounding techniques um, and then self care. We did a month on self-care. It is so important, especially now with all the stress of the pandemic, um, uncertainties of jobs, uncertainty with school. So any type of self-care. And we talked a lot, I think it was March where we talked about self-care. And it's not about chocolate cake and bubble baths, but it's doing things that you know you need to do to um, just treat your body better. Um, like it could be cooking a meal for yourself or it could be going grocery shopping or not even from a food standpoint it could be budgeting if finances are an issue or um, meditating uh, so self-care can look like a lot of things and it's not necessarily just that quintessential going to get a massage so self-care daily uh, should be incorporated into your routine all right those are the 11 ways to reduce cortisol naturally um, written by Kristen. And the other one that I wanted to mention that's kind of new is um, certain supplements. So there are some supplements that have been shown to help reduce stress. So one that I've been using lately, um, ashwagandha. Um, it's a, an adaptogen, I believe, um, that has been shown to help reduce cortisol levels. Um, with any supplement, I would definitely ask your doctor and or dietitian before starting. Um, but there are some interesting supplements out there that may reduce cortisol. All right, let's get into the recipe. So one of my favorite breakfasts that is quick is overnight oats. So if you've never heard of it, basically it's like a cold oatmeal mixture that you can eat. Um, kind of like a parfait and it's so easy that you can just mix up five of them in advance and then eat them throughout the week for breakfast. 
So what happens as the oats sit overnight in the liquid is they soften and then you can just eat it just like that. Um, so it's nice in the summer because it's a cold breakfast option, not a piping hot um, bowl of oatmeal. So with the overnight oats, I usually pick a jar and I just make it right in the jar. My recipe for overnight oats is equal parts oats, milk, and um, Greek yogurt. You could also use dairy alternatives for these. Um, so I will do about a third cup oats. Stick it in the jar. This is kind of a small jar, hopefully it fits. A third cup of milk. And I'm just using cow's milk here. And then a third cup of Greek yogurt. And I like to add the Greek yogurt because it adds protein. And this is actually a 5% milk fat yogurt, so it's adding a little bit of fat too, which is going to help it be a little bit more satisfying. So I'm just going to mix this, mix this up. I only use rolled oats, well, you could use quick oats, but I don't use steel cut oats here because I find that it does not soften overnight. Um, one time I tried it, it actually never softened after a few days. So I like the rolled oats because they're edible within a few hours of just sitting in the in the liquid. So I have the jar, it's just about full. Might use a little bit bigger jar. This is an eight ounce jar. Um, so mix it up. You can add sweetener here. I'm just gonna add a little bit, um, a spoonful of some sweetener. I'm just using sugar. You can use whatever you like, stevia, monk fruit, Splenda, whatever. Okay, mix that in. All right, so then once that's done, it can just, oh, I almost forgot. <laughs> I also like to add ground flaxseed, so. Flax is a great source of um, omega-3s and fiber. So I'm just adding in a little spoonful of the ground flax. I usually, I think I've made a few smoothies on Facebook Live and I usually add ground flax to smoothies as well. Um, cooked oatmeal, you can add it into uh, just some ways to sneak it in, especially if you need a little more fiber in your diet. Okay. So we have our overnight oats, um, just gonna be a good balance of carbs and protein, particularly if you use the Greek yogurt. Um, goes in the fridge to sit, and then when you are ready to eat it, it has kind of congealed. This was in, the, I made this this morning, a couple hours ago, and it's already ready, so it doesn't take long. Um, so in a jar, it's got like a thicker, more like a yogurty consistency. It's good. Okay, so what I was saying, carbs and protein. If you use a dairy alternative, like coconut yogurt or something like that, that may not have the protein, you could add some protein powder. Um, you could add chia seeds, hemp hearts, anything like that. Um, but I'm actually gonna top it with a few things too for some crunch and some more interest. Um, you could add a sprinkle of cinnamon, and mix that in. Um, I'm all about tahini right now um, in my savory cooking as well as sweet. I've been adding it to my smoothies. So I have this um, squeeze jar of tahini, but you could use any nut butter. Um, so I'm just gonna top it with a squeeze of tahini. Almond butter, peanut butter, cashew butter. It all be tasty. I usually add that in right before I'm gonna eat it um, so that it's smoother um, room temperature versus the cold. It might just be a little stiff. I'm gonna do some dark chocolate chips, some pistachios, and some craisins. So we're adding a little bit more fat and protein with our toppings, a little bit more interest because it's got some crunch. You could add berries, uh, fresh or frozen, and you are ready with your breakfast. So I love the overnight oats, they're so easy. This had a bunch of our anti-inflammatory foods, the nuts, the seeds, the berries, the ground flax. So it's 
one-stop shop. That's good. Yeah, that'll do. I actually haven't had overnight oats in a while and I just am reminded that it's such a great breakfast. So I'll post a recipe. We have a few overnight oats recipes on our website. Um, and I hope you enjoyed it. How to lower cortisol naturally. You can check out the blog and read a little bit more in depth about all of those points that I mentioned. Um, and let me know if you have any questions. All right, I hope everyone is having a great August. And like I said, in September, we are going to be focusing on health at every size and intuitive eating. So we're really excited about <laughs> finishing eating, sorry, I'm so rude. We're really excited about this new um, direction for our social media with Haze. So check it out and uh, we'll see you next month. Okay guys?